vlog and welcome to this video which is about making a herbal mix for the purposes of offering back to the earth when we're foraging or wild crafting herbs and plants. Um, last week I was making a video about cleavers and gathering cleavers to make cleavers infused water and it got me thinking a little bit about you know the foraging guidelines, uh, responsible and respectable foraging, um, but also the role of ceremony and ritual in that exchange. So in the West there is a kind of the mainstream narrative around um, plants and foraging is that we view plants as a kind of an object or as a resource that we tap into and even in a lot of the foraging guidelines, the ones that I publish from the Woodland Trust, which I think are excellent. There's, um, you know, the reasons why we don't take too much and why we um, don't kind of decimate a patch of uh, plants or a tree or whatever. It's more for kind of practical reasons that, um, you know, involve that plant being available to other people who are foraging or even you know animals that eat that plant um, or in order to preserve that plant in terms of pollination cycles and the longevity of the species which is all completely um, you know necessary and um, I'm really glad grateful that they have those guidelines and that people keep to that but it, um, it got me thinking a little bit about you know, what's the role of um, ceremony, gratitude and exchange within that relationship. So over the years I've kind of um, come into a different place around this myself and I've been inspired by different kind of indigenous peoples, I guess. Um, so in North America, uh, the indigenous tribes there often spoken of as the Native Americans, have much more of a view of plants as beings rather than the objects or the resources for humans that I spoke about. So when we believe in the plant as a being, a living being, which we kind of know that they are, um, but when we really come into the awareness of that, then it becomes quite difficult to just treat them as if they were a resource or an object. So I found myself kind of going out into nature and feeling a bit guilty about foraging things that maybe I didn't particularly need but it was just you know in order to make medicine that I wanted to try out making and things like that. So I guess it's all about coming into more of a balanced relationship with the earth in general and um, coming into a place of awareness with that giving and receiving and not just kind of blindly taking, 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 becoming more aware of, you know, what we do need, what we want from the earth, but also asking for permission and especially ex expressing gratitude when we can collect those fruits of the earth, of nature, plants, whatever it may be, even animals. If you are a hunter, um, you know, it's not to everybody's, it's not for everybody's lifestyle, but I think that expressing gratitude, something that I'll talk about a bit more in depth later, is really an important part of that process and a kind of, um, kind of moving into a deeper and more reciprocal relationship with the earth. So traditionally, the North American indigenous peoples would offer when they're you know, harvesting plants from nature, from the wild. Uh, an offering of tobacco, which is a plant that is sacred to them. Um, it's also known as the kind of gatekeeper to the plant spirits. So this is kind of moving a bit into, you know, plant spirit medicine. And that's the medicine using, you know, acknowledging not just the kind of like physical effects of those plants upon our bodies but also the spiritual you know interaction between the plant spirit and our own spirit it doesn't really matter if you believe in that or not 
um, this is their tradition and um, so offering the tobacco was and is still um, a kind of ceremonial way of giving thanks to the land and acknowledging the kind of work of the earth and the sacrifice of the earth for giving up whatever it may be that we're harvesting. Um, it's also a kind of exchange, so you're offering something in return for the medicine of that plant or the nourishment of that plant if you're picking something that you're going to eat, um, but also the kind of knowledge of that medicine. So sometimes when you don't make any offerings and you're just kind of like, oh, I heard, you know, nettles are good for iron, so I'm going to pick a bunch of nettles. And you might, you know, you might have I'm sure that you would have a beneficial effect from, you know, eating those nettles, maybe in the form of a delicious nettle soup, but um, perhaps it's not going to really affect you on a deeper level than that. And when you make an offering with the intention of getting to know that plant on a deeper level, then it's kind of like you're entering into that reciprocal relationship of, of energy transfer, but also of knowledge transfer. And you're opening yourself up to learning from that plant from a deeper level, not just kind of from the textbook of, you know, a herbal or whatever it might be. So, um, yeah, so we're moving from an understanding of plants as resources to an understanding of plants in which they are living beings. And, um, you know, what can we offer in return for the gifts of plants, food, medicine, all that. Um, so in the Native American tradition, as I've said, it's tobacco, usually, um, along with prayers and ceremonies and all, all sorts of other stuff. But what I thought was, I'm doing a bit of spring cleaning in my, cup, my herbal cupboards, and I think if you're interested in herbal medicine, you probably have lots of herbs left over, um, you know, you've been sick with something for a while and you've been using a lot of calendula but then you end up you know not really using the rest of it and then it goes a little bit um, not so potent looking and a little bit like dead and um, so anyway I've got a lot of leftover kind of herbs which are a little bit past their sell by date um, the same goes for spices so um, I've kind of gone through my spice cupboards in a kind of spring cleaning effort and found some really old looking stuff um, and I've basically put all of those things into a big pot and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to just break up any of the larger pieces and kind of combine it so it's kind of homogenous and um, I thought that would be something quite nice to offer to the earth on my future foraging expeditions and um, you know the only things that I would wouldn't really include in this are things like chili pepper like chili flakes or um, cayenne pepper things like that which are extremely strong that um, if you're sprinkling it on some wild plants might actually sort of affect their growth <laughs> and have the adverse effect um, of what we want to say, which is just thank you for being here and thank you for everything that you do for us. Um, so yeah, I'm going to switch over now to a video of that. Here we have the herbal mix that I've made. So there are a few different things here that you can see. So this one I think is thyme. This is oregano, coriander seeds. Then over here there's some of these flowers which in Italian are called malva. I think they might be related to mallow but you can see how old and dry they are and these are little fragments of horse tails. We've also got some little bits of hibiscus, a little bit past their prime and I think that's, that's oh no and then there are these things which are actually really really old dried um, raspberry leaves. That I foraged about three years ago. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just kind of making it all homogenous, um, which means like just spreading it all out evenly. So there we go. I think I'm going to break it up a little bit 
further so it's a tiny bit finer um, but there you that's essentially what my mix is going to look like um, you know as well as being a kind of symbolic offering to the earth some of this stuff actually has a lot of amazing minerals like the horse tails here these little fragments have a lot of silica in them so you know when that kind of goes down into the earth uh, that can be absorbed by plants and can actually be quite useful so you know nothing is going to waste but also some of this stuff is um, gonna be very beneficial to the plants hopefully so I'm just um, you know using my hands to process the herbs a little bit more and make them into more of a kind of powder um, and something that you could do at this stage, which could be quite nice, um, is to kind of infuse that intention of gratitude and reciprocity into the herbal mix. And you could you could do anything. You can do that in many different ways. So I would just, you know, tune into yourself and figure out what that might look like for you. But um, for example, one thing that I love to practice is san chanting Sanskrit mantras so you could do something like that like you could chant a mantra into this mix um, that is appropriate for that kind of you know gratitude or whatever it might be or you could just you know in you know put that energy into your hands and then as they're sort of working their way through the mix then it will infuse the whole the whole thing uh, or you could sort of sing it a song. I'm not going to do it on camera because I think I'm just going to get really embarrassed. <laughs> um, yeah, anything really that you feel like, you know, saying to the mix or singing to it or energetically putting in there now is a good time to do it while you're kind of breaking it all up and homogenizing it. So there we have it. That's my mix. And that's kind of as fine as I think I'm going to get it. Um, I think that's fine. Now, all that you have to do is find some kind of container. And I have this, which I think is perfect. It's a, I've been just storing a necklace in here, but I think I'll repurpose it. Alternatively, you could um, kind of make your own one of these quite easily. So you just get you know, a piece of fabric, this one might actually be a little bit leaky with all these holes, but I have a couple of um, sort of recycled Ziploc bags. Like that one looks like it would fit in there quite nicely. So what I might do is just fill this one up so that there's no little crumbs coming out. And then I'll put this inside the cloth bag. And whenever I go out foraging or even going on a walk then I will have something in my pocket to offer back. Um, it's also worth saying at this stage that you know this is a kind of symbolic offering um, so if you don't have loads of you know leftover plants etc in your home um, then there's lots of other things that you can do to Kind of participate in this ritual uh, so for example even just you know putting your hands to the earth there we go that's done um, putting your hands to the earth and saying thank you um, or singing a song as you pick the herbs or the plants that you're picking um, before you're picking just really trying to kind of tune into the plants and slowing down and having a moment of kind of asking for that permission and you know making your intentions known just saying you know you can say this out loud or, or in your head just something like hello like I've come here to collect some medicine and this is my intention for it or I've come here to pick some food and I'm going to use it to feed myself or my family things like that um, and I think it just you know stops us getting into that quite sort of selfish um, and entitled way of being which is like just barreling into a, a woodland area and just like helping ourselves. Um, it's just a much nicer way of being in my experience and a nicer way of practicing a more mindful and aware way of, um, you know, yeah, 
kind of connecting with plants and nature.